excuse me, I respond to two questions from subscribers. The first question is this, Doug, a friend of mine has a great toe that's halfway separated from the nail bed. It's halfway back from the free edge. Now it's turning a deep yellow. Her other toes seem to be okay, except the great toe is uneven and a little wavy looking. And that's the same with the other great toe. How can she have a normal nail growth again? Or did she damage her nails? <laughs> Is that she's a personal trainer and she runs a lot. Can this type of shoe make a difference? She recently started using a new type of shoe. <clears throat> well, there's a lot of questions there. I'll try to address them all. And there's a lot of surprising changes going on underfoot. <clears throat> You'll find out what I mean by that. This is a very common problem that many runners, walkers, and others with active lifestyle don't understand, <clears throat> but their ignorance may cause them to injure their feet. Even some who sell athletic shoes for a living don't seem to understand how much the foot can swell and lengthen, especially during moderate to intense exercise. I'm a long distance walker, and I often walk 10 miles or more. That's 16 kilometers, so I'm walking for four hours nonstop on a good day. I always buy shoes that are at least two full sizes bigger than what fits me while I'm standing there in the shoe store. Why? When we walk or run long distances, the foot can swell a full shoe size or more. The foot can also swell just for stand, from standing for long periods. So when we walk or run any distance, we can expect the shoe is going to, uh, the foot is going to swell at least a full size. By the time I finish one of my long walks, my big toe is just touching <clears throat> the inside of my shoes. My feet are now two sizes larger and longer. Typically, they'll return to their normal size within a few hours. Now, if I bought shoes that are only one size too big, by the end of my walk, or probably halfway in, in, into the walk, my, toes, my big toes will be crammed inside my shoes. This puts great pressure on the nail plate, sometimes enough to break the hyponychium seal, which is the seal that's underneath the free edge of the natural nail. With continued pressure, this condition will only worsen. Now, eventually, this could lead to separation of the nail plate completely uh, separating away from the nail bed. This is the condition called onycholysis. <clears throat> There's a great risk that this space, which sits directly over the nail bed, may become infected, or that the great toe, the big toe, could completely fall off. Now, if the nail plate has turned a dark color, as you've described, that could also indicate an infection has occurred, so I can understand your concern. I recommend that you refrain from treating this nail until it can be examined by a medical professional to determine if, it's, if there's an infection present. Assuming there's no permanent damage, and once any minor physical, um, physical uh, I'm sorry, assuming, assuming there's any, no physical damage, and of course there, there's no the infection, there's no infection that's been cured up, cleared up if there has been one. Once this minor physical damage that's being delivered to the nail plate is eliminated, then the nail plate will probably grow back, uh, go back to growing normally again. Again, depending on how long the trauma has been going on, how serious the damage was. But prolonged and repeated or severe physical trauma is often the cause of a toenail separating from the, from the nail bed. So when you purchase shoes for any kind of athletic use, including walking for more than an hour, you should consider ensuring that they are large enough to accommodate the swelling of the feet. Check to ensure there's somewhere between a thumb and two fingers width, clear space between the end of your longest toe and the inside of your shoe, which shoemakers call the toe box. Wavy looking lines across the width of the nail plate are another indicator that the shoes are too short. The nail plate is solid, but it can flow and change shape when exposed to constant pressure or repeated impact. The nail plate is deformable, and these ripples are created when the nail plate inside the shoe is repeatedly pushed up against the toe box. If this is ignored, the condition can eventually <clears throat> turn into a case of onycholysis, and then if that's ignored, it may eventually become infected. <clears throat> Ask your friend to check her shoe size by gauging how much space is between the tip of the toe and the inside of the shoe box. She should do this at the beginning, middle, and end of a run, and then check three hours after the run. She'll be amazed at how, how the foot changes in length. <clears throat> Actually, it's pretty cool if you think about it. 
The feet have a lot of flexibility and grow larger when we need them most, and then calm back down to their regular size when, when we're, they're not needed to, to swell and accommodate for this extra pressure that we're putting on them. So remember, after strenuous exercising that involved the feet, it's a good idea to check your shoes to ensure they aren't pressing against, the, against your great toe or your big toe, and at, because at a minimum, this is going to cause calluses in that area to worsen. In other words, this is just trouble waiting to happen. If your great toe is separating from the bed or, the largest, or your largest toe plate is wavy or calluses are forming on the tips of your toes, don't suspect your new shoes. Instead, suspect the size of those shoes. <clears throat> and different manufacturer shoes may be different sizes. So if you're just going by the numbers, that can fool you. Make sure you're checking uh, with your toes or with your thumbs or fingers to ensure you have plenty of room. Don't you just love feet? I, I, no, I sure do. So make sure you take care of them. They'll be needing you and you'll be needing them.